So today, we're going to discuss about fish, shellfish, vegetables, and fruits. First fish, or fin fish. We have three categories of fin fish. The number one is round fish, which has a backbone along the upper edge with two fillet on either sides. Also, with one eye on each side of the head. Example, trout, snapper, bass, salmon, bangus, tilapia, lapu-lapu, maya-maya. Next, we have flatfish. Flatfish, the backbone runs through the center of the fish to create four quarter fillets, two upper, two lower, or two full fillet. One from top and one from bottom. Both eyes on the same side of the head. Example, flounder and soulfish. Next is no bony fish. Fish which has cartilage rather than bones. Example, skatefish, shark, and monkfish. In this video, you can show how to fillet a round fish. Hello, I'm Chef Eric Longhi, an instructor at the Escoffee School for Culinary Arts, and I'm here to show you how to fillet a round fish. To begin, let's look at the anatomy of the fish and find a few reference points. First, we have the pectoral fin and the cervical fin. We'll have to cut behind these. And then we have the spiny dorsal fin and the soft dorsal fin, which we will have to stay on top of. Also, there is a spine running down the center with ribs running out to protect the vital organs. A round fish would be a fish that swims upright uh, with a fillet on each side. So let's get started. First, we want to make an incision behind the two fins. And then we will make another incision along the back, staying above the two dorsal fins. Once we make this cut all the way down to the backbone, you'll start to feel your knife go over um, the ripples of the vertebrae. Once you reach this point, you will have to angle your knife in order to go above that rib cage, as it is um, quite difficult to cut all the way through that. As you can see, we start to see the curve of those ribs, and we just want to run our knife over the top. Uh, make sure you don't continue to follow that and get back down to the backbone um, once you have gotten past that series of ribs. Knife under, work it back and forth all the way to the tail. And then you can flip your fillet over, go through the meat, and move this right to the edge of the board uh, where you'll have the most access to this. And as you're pulling on the skin, slowly work the knife back and forth while giving steady pressure towards the front end. There you have a fillet of striped bass. We'll just clean up this uh, little fatty tissue. Feel through to check for any bones if you notice any Use your fish pliers to remove them. And there you have a clean fillet. Um, you would just repeat on the other side in the same manner. Thank you for watching this video on how to fillet a round fish and have a wonderful day. In this video, you can see how to fillet a flat fish. Okay, so filleting a fish. Most important knife for this is a filleting knife. You want that elasticity, that flexibility that bends within your knife because this area is going to be sat along the bones as we fillet the fish off the bone. I'm going to follow this line up. So the first cut with the point of the knife in and then we follow the line all the way down. Down to the bottom. and then off for the fillet here. And then the backbone is the, 
this part here is the point up. So what we're going to do is come down off the point and take the fish off the bone. So again, point in and then just move the knife all the way through. And it's nice, lung strokes, but the knife needs to sit on the bone. Nice lung strokes all the way through as you fill it all the way down. Bring in the meat or the flesh off the bone, like so. Nice strokes, and then all the way off, like so. Turn the fish around, and then start again, this time over the backbone and down, through. Point of the knife in, and you can hear the actual knife running along the bones of the fish, all the way through, all the way down, and all the way off. Like so. Turn it around. More difficult on this side, because you can't see the line so easy. Point in, following it all the way down to the bottom. And then point the knife in and down, lift it all the way through. So we're getting the flesh off the bone in one swoop. Purchasing guidelines, how to know if the fish is fresh or not. Smell the fish. Feel the skin. Look at the fins and tail. Press the flesh. Check the eyes. Check the gills. Check the belly. So, smell the fish. Amoyin natin yung isda. If, has, if it has a sea aroma or medyo... Foul smelling. Pag foul smelling, so don't accept the fish. Next is fill the skin. Okay, so the scale should be firm, not loose, not shiny. So dapat, pag hinawakan natin yung fish, hindi madaling maalis yung kaliskis niya. So pag madaling maalis yung kaliskis niya, ibig sabihin hindi na siya okay or fresh. Look at the fins and tail. So should be moist, fresh, flexible, Full and should not appear ragged or dry. So, dapat yung mga palikpik niya, moist pa and also, hindi pa siya parang sira-sira. Next is, press the flesh. Should feel firm and elastic. Not visible fingerprint when you lift your finger away. So, dapat pag pinindot natin yung fish, dapat nagbabounce back yung laman. Pero once na nakal pag pinindot natin siya at lumubog na siya, ibig sabihin bilasan na isda. So, then, don't buy it. Number five, check the eyes. Should be clear and full. So, if we see the eyes medyo cloudy or medyo parang may katarata yung itsura, ibig sabihin, the fish is old and not fresh. Number six is ch check the gills or yung hasang. So, dapat yung hasang should be deep red or maroon in color, never gray or brown. Pag gray and grayish and brownish na yung gills or hasang, ibig sabihin the fish is not fresh. And lastly, check the belly. No sign of belly burns. Yung belly or yung ilalim ng isda, pag nakita natin na sobrang lambot or halos nadudurog na siya, pag, lalo na pag pinipindot natin, ibig sabihin the fish is not fresh. Next, we have shellfish. Categories of shellfish. We have mollusk and crustaceans. Mollusk, soft-bodied shellfish covered by a shell of one or more pieces which are of three types. So, we have three classifications of mollusk or three types. Number one is univalves. Number two is bivalves. And number three is cephalopods. So, univalves, single shells such as abalone, snail, conch, sea urchins. So, yung pag mga univalves, yun yung mga suso 
Kohol. So, it is part of Uni Univalves. Bakit? Because it is a single shell. So, isa lang yung shell niya. Then, next is bivalves. Two shells joined by a hinge or hinge such as clams, mussels, oysters, and scallops. So, clams are halaan, mussels, tahong, oyster, oyster talaba, and scallops. And lastly, cephalopods such as squid and octopus. So, usually, cephalopods has tentacles and multiple arms. Crustaceans with segmented shells and jointed legs such as shrimp, lobster, crayfish, and crabs. Vegetables and fruits. Vegetables are edible roots, tubers, stems, leaves, leaf stalks, seeds, seed pods, and flower heads of a wide array of plants. Tomatoes are classified botanically as fruits. They are in included here since the main culinary use is as vegetables. Market forms of vegetables. We have fresh and preserved vegetables. Market vegetables such as fresh vegetables are produced that has not been processed in any way or whatsoever. No chemical or any heat was applied. The natural raw state that the vegetable grows Fresh vegetables can be cut into smaller, more manageable portions. Preserved vegetables. Vegetables that are dried, frozen, pickled, soaked in brine or in oil, as well as chutney and jams. Preparation of vegetables. Wash vegetables thoroughly enough to remove, to remove dirt, pesticides, and microorganisms. When peeling vegetables, remove as little as possible so as not to lose its nutritional content as well as its yield. When cooking vegetables, cooking time must be kept to a minimum in order to retain its flavor and nutrients. Guidelines in achieving proper doneness in vegetables. First, do not overcook. Second, Cook as closer to service as possible. Third, if vegetable must be cooked in advance, slightly undercook them. Four, for uniform doneness, cut into uniform size before cooking. Controlling flavor changes. Cook for a short time as possible. Use boiling salted water. Addition of salt helps reduce flavor loss. Steam vegetables whenever appropriate. Use only enough water to cover to minimize leaching. Standards of quality cooked vegetables. Color, bright natural color. Appearance on plate, cut neatly and uniformly. Flavor, full natural flavor, and sweetness, sometimes called garden fresh flavor. Seasoning, lightly and appropriately season. Texture, cook the right degree of doneness. Most vegetables should be crisp. Texture, cook to the right degree of doneness. Most vegetables should be crisp, tender, not overcooked and mushy, but not tough on woody e either. Sauce. Butter and seasoned butter should be fresh and not used heavily. Vegetables should not be greasy. Cream sauce and other sauces should not be too thick or too heavily seasoned. Vegetable combination. Interesting combinations attract customers, flavors, colors, and shapes should be pleasing in combination. As you can see in the picture, there are the different doneness of vegetables from undercooked to overcooked. So, what should we choose? Of course, just right. 
Fruits is the part of the plant which is in charge of protecting the seeds and guarantees their dispersal. Market forms of fruits Fresh, packed, or openly displayed Dried fruits Naturally dried under the sun or in special ovens Improves storage qualities and color Candied fruits These are fruits preserved in syrup to give them a glossy coating or glaze or may be coated with granulated sugar, then crystallized. Types of preserves Jams Sweet spread that contain whole or slice or chopped piece of fruit flavored with spices. Jellies Same as jams, but the pieces of fruits are then strained with a cheesecloth. Marmalades or marmalade Same as jam, with the use of citrus fruits when the peel is also included in the spread. Pickle and chutney These are flavorings used to provide contrast to a dish or the accompanying foods. Pickles Fruit are coarsely chopped then preserved in brine or flavored vinegar. These are readily eaten these are ready to eat after 3 to 4 weeks and last for a year. Chutneys Fruits are cooked in thick sauce that turns out to be sweet tasting, thick and spicy. It is best consumed after 3 months for the flavors to blend and mellow and they can be kept for a year. In this picture shown are the differences between jams, preserve, jelly, curd, marmalade, fruit butter, confit, conserved, and chutney. Thank you for watching. Goodbye!